Hello everyone and welcome to another video. In recent times, BMW Motorsport has been one of the biggest supporters of sim racing out of all the manufacturers on the globe. They've dedicated themselves to create spectacular live event competitions. They have an official series running each week on iRacing, which only adds itself as a supplement to the highly competitive BMW 120 series. Just recently, they even partnered with four of the most prominent sim racing teams to provide support as well. And I'm just talking about iRacing here, this doesn't even include its involvement in other sims such as R Factor 2 and Assetto Course Competizione as well. Now they have gone a step further and added in a brand new car into iRacing that hasn't even found itself in a real race yet and still won't for another 12 months. The BMW M4 GT3 is only a development vehicle at this point in time and will remain that way until 2022. This means that the iRacing version of the M4 GT3 will get developed almost in real time with the real world car. This is something very cool indeed for sim racing. Pair this up with the fact that sim racing hardware specialist Fanatec themselves actually contributed to the steering wheel design of this car, the blurred lines between virtual and reality get ever closer with this new addition. Here on iRacing, the M4 GT3 replaces the Z4 GT3 which has caused a bit of a reaction at first with the Z4 proving to be a fan favourite. I have to admit, even I'm a little sad to see the Z4 being put into retirement as that was the car that I used in my first ever iRacing World Championship back in 2018. The M4 GT3 still carries along a very similar bloodline though with its front engine layout which is becoming less and less common in GT competition. One of the benefits to a mid-engine car is having the ability to package the car a little tighter and reduce the wheelbase, something the BMW cannot do, and as such, the BMW is enormous. In fact, the largest GT3 by some margin, even over the Mercedes AMG. BMW, come on, you are not helping the big boy case. Visually, it's in my opinion not the best looking car around with the kidney grille on this particular version of the M4 being more extreme than ever before. Enough of its visual appearance though and how long it is, how is the car to drive? Being front engined, its natural tendencies are to understeer more than oversteer into a corner which does make it a relatively safe car to drive, especially for new drivers to GT3 racing. Trail braking in this car is super easy as well and the car will rarely break loose if you get a little over eager coming off the brake pedal. Speaking of which, the brakes are very good on this car. Whilst GT3s as a whole are typically extremely even on braking performance throughout all seven manufacturers, I do feel that you can get away with a braking, you know, just a meter or two later in the BMW which could be useful in door-to-door -door combat. The BMW is very compliant over the curbs, especially compared to the Lamborghini that we tested last week. This car can hit the curbs and keep the speed up much better than most of the GT3 field in fact, but still isn't entirely on the same level as a McLaren or a Ferrari. Getting the differential set up correctly in this car is more important than other cars though. The BMW has been found to have a habit of wheel spinning the inside tyre when trying to pick up the throttle in tight hairpins causing an awkward oversteer moment firstly, and secondly, it causes the traction control to kick in much stronger than necessary, which leads to you losing time the entire way out of the corner. As a whole, the car does struggle for lap time in the slow speed corners due to its large wheelbase compared to the other cars on the grid. Taking the car to a circuit like Montreal with repeated slow speed changes of direction does make this car feel just a little bit sloppy. However, once you can get the car up to speed and at a circuit like Suzuka or even Silverstone, the longer wheelbase becomes a benefit in the high speed corners. You might even be able to get away with a slightly lower rear wing angle than usual due to the extra stability this car has in those sections of the racetrack, so choosing which circuits to use the BMW at will become a crucial factor I believe. In my balanced performance video, which I must quickly add, thank you to everybody for the incredible support on that video, I'm stoked you all enjoyed it, we did find out that the BMW was extremely competitive in the current balanced performance, scoring the second highest points tally over the five tests. But still, it does have a few weaknesses to factor in. The BMW does have a unique engine and gearbox with a very short RPM range with revs in a straight line only getting as low as 5600 RPM and upshifting a little past 6700 RPM. So overall only an 1100 RPM difference during acceleration. 
This high RPM band actually ends up causing relatively poor fuel consumption compared to the other GT3s, with the BMW coming in second worst in our fuel consumption test. Secondly, being front-engined, tire wear isn't quite on the same level as the mid-engine cars such as the Lamborghini and Audis. Beyond tire wear, you can also find yourself overheating the front tires pretty quickly as well with this car, requiring just a little bit more steering locks to get the nose into some corners. It is important to remember that the BMW M4 GT3 will be changing a little more than some other cars in the simulator over the next few patches and season builds as it is still a prototype car. The car's behaviour may change in as little as 5 weeks for all we know. It's the first time in iRacing's history that a car has been brought to the simulator so much earlier than its real world race debut. Even the Dallara IR18 Indy car that made its way onto the sim before its real world debut, that was just a few weeks away at most from its debut race. With the BMW, we're talking about 12 months minimum. What are your guys' thoughts on the BMW M4 GT3? Let me know down in the comments below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and otherwise, I'm Bo Elbert, and I will see you all in the next video.